This is the Elias Moreira podcast. Here we discuss classical musicianship, what it means to be a musician, the lifestyle, and how to overcome the daily challenges that every young musician has to face within this highly competitive industry. Enjoy. So it's February 2023, and um, the topic I want to talk about today is something that has been going on in my mind for a couple, couple of weeks now, since my actually since my uh, master exam part one, which is why are there some musicians that just seem to have it all and to just play amazingly well. And why other people struggle so much to get on that on that level? Because I be believe that it's not only practicing which makes a person really great in something. I mean, yes, it, a big part of it is practicing. And then there is this other natural talent. But I also believe that a lot of behaviors in our daily lives can influence our skills in playing an instrument and while doing some research about this i actually came across a podcast which is really really interesting it's called the human lab it's it's run by a professor for neuroscience called dr andrew huberman and yeah i've learned a lot from that pod podcast and lately in the past few weeks and There was one episode in his podcast, which was how to learn a skill faster. And there were a lot of things that I really wanted to experiment with and try out in my daily life, because I don't know why I, I, I never thought I would say that, but before, you know, I was ne never really into becoming a great musician, but now I somehow got the drive to master my, my skills in playing uh, my instrument, my cello. And I think this information that I discovered through this podcast can benefit a lot of people out there, a lot of musicians who might listen to this. And um, yeah, I just wanted to share a bit what I what I learned and how to actually learn faster, be be more motivated, and just get better results while practicing, and maybe even become a top level musician. You know, a high performer always on on the top on the peak and i truly believe that it is possible because we oftentimes are very negative about our expectations we think that yeah being a musician is just something that you have to be lucky and a lot of things of you know and that's actually also true but i also strongly believe that we can influence a lot of our outcome while practicing by changing our daily behaviors so First of all, while we practice, let's talk about when we are practicing because there's a couple of things that happen. Maybe sometimes you recognize yourself, you go into the practicing room and you just start practicing without really paying attention. You know, you just play the instrument, you're just thinking about other things and and you're just playing your instrument. You're not really paying attention, you're just doing routine work because that's how you've been living the past 10, 20 years. You just go to school and you practice. Turns out that this is sometimes a lot a lot of times counterproductive because you're teaching your brain basically that the mistakes you're doing because when you don't pay attention to what you're playing oftentimes you just play things out of tune you maybe just make a progression wrong on the keyboard and you just play over it and you don't repeat it your brain is still learning so it's things okay because you didn't really felt the mistake you didn't really realize that there was a mistake your brain thinks it's correct so it's gonna save it as okay this is how you should play it that's why you do the mistake then over and over again but if you're really consciously practicing and every time you make a mistake you stop you really stop and you say hey wait there was something wrong that's when your brain starts to change so that's a concept which is called neuroplasticity it's starting to become active once you realize you did a mistake so if you're aware and you're consciously practicing and a mistake comes up and you see, okay, I just, just made a mistake and even you get angry about it, like you get frustrated, you're fuck, I just made a mistake. That's actually good because what's happening is your brain is changing, your neuroplasticity is in, in action and you repeat it 
And once you do it again and it's correct and we repeat it over and over again and it's more and more correct, you're teaching your brain that, hey, I want to play it like this and not like that. So your brain is changing and yeah, that's that's how it works while you're practicing. Also, what is really important is once you finish practicing, let's say you practice now for half an hour, 45 minutes and you just want to make a five minute break. Oftentimes what we musicians do is because we can't stay alone for a second, we t- take our phone and we scroll through social media, we get try to get distracted and we just like trying to you know we think we are relaxing but you're actually sabotaging your practice that you just did for the past half an hour because you're distracting yourself immediately so your brain doesn't even have the time to process what you just practiced and that's actually scientifically proven because what happens in your brain is if you would stop after 45 minutes and you just sit in your chair and you just close your eyes for five minutes and you just think about nothing you just like sit there and breathe what is happening in your brain is the sequence of movements that you just did because it actually has to do a lot with the brain to muscle connection or you're having a lot of muscles working while you're practicing a passage or violin or piano whatever your muscle a brain to muscle connection is being replayed in your brain while you're just sitting there and doing nothing you know it's it's going backwards we don't really know why the brain is doing that uh, that's something I learned from that podcast from Andrew Huberman and he doesn't know also why that happens it's something that is, has not been discovered yet but it's seen that your your skill learning while you sit there for five minutes and don't distract yourself with social media on your phone or whatever you are processing what you just did and therefore later when you pick it up again it's going to be better it's going to be more effective than if you would have taken your phone and be distracted okay so repetition is key Doing mistakes is actually why you learn. So doing mistakes is actually good because that's when neuroplasticity sets in. And and when you do a pause or when you finish practicing, don't distract yourself right away. But try to just, you know, sit there for a few minutes and, and don't do anything. Let your brain process what you just did. Now, another thing which is hugely important, how to get your practicing and your skills on another level is sleep sleeping well and that's oftentimes very difficult because we are very anxious people (laughs) musicians are very sensitive and we are very um yeah we think a lot we are very uh, emotional about things so sometimes this disrupts our sleep so we want to be able to sleep good because that's actually when the main work of what you just practice is gonna be so much more effective you're gonna come back the next day and if you sleep well what you practice the day before is going to be much more in your hands. So how can you sleep better? Well, there are certain things you can do to enhance sleep. Um, I will not talk about all the things that Andrew Huberman said. If you want to know more about how to sleep correctly, then go to his podcast. But essentially, in the night, not just like me right now, it's actually 7.44, it's quite bright in this room but i'm just turning on the lights right now because i i want to make this video and if it's dark you can't see but you want to turn down the lights you want to dim the lights dim the lights as maximum as possible because if lights are on your uh brain gets signals that hey it's still day and you should be still alert and still be awake so melatonin which is secreted through the pineal gland which is in the middle of your brain is inhibited so you won't get as much melatonin coming out of your uh, pineal gland which is going to make it more worse for you to fall asleep and stay asleep so if you dim the lights at night uh, before going to sleep yeah so as soon as the sun sets dim the lights yeah have low lights on you're gonna sleep better later believe me and the next day the following day when you wake up the first thing you should do is really get sunlight into your uh into your eyes into onto your skin i know if you live in in brussels where i live at the moment um you won't have as much sunlight especially in the in the in the winter months but even daylight alone yeah if it comes through the clouds the photons of the sun is still coming through if you get that into your eyes eyes what is happening to your brain is your dopamine level rises which means you get more motivation which is going to lead for more focus to practicing better your cortisol levels which is a stress hormone is going to peak in the morning so in the afternoon you won't be stressed and you will sleep later again much better so if you get sunlight in the morning you will sleep very very well 
uh, on the following night, which is going to, again, enhance your practice because you slept well, you got your dopamine, you've been more motivated, all these things. So sunlight, going to sleep uh, um, with the lights very dim, these things help you a lot to sleep better. Also regarding coffee, which is really, really interesting. Sometimes, you know, as musicians, we are sitting down, uh, we are practicing and we get tired because we're practicing three, four, five hours and you just like, it's it's a physical act and you, you need some energy. So we oftentimes think, okay, if I drink just some coffee right now, it's going to be better. Sometimes you're practicing at six in the afternoon and you say, okay, I'm just going to drink a coffee right now to get my uh, wakefulness again and I can practice better. That's actually very, very wrong because what's happening is the ca- caffeine that is in, in, in the coffee is going to stay in your system it's going to be in your brain it's going to be in your in your body for much longer than when you took it in so when you take coffee at six in the afternoon while you go to sleep at midnight the caffeine is still there and it's going to disrupt your sleep even though if you fall asleep yeah if you have no problems if drinking coffee and you can still sleep like a baby the structure of your sleep is not going to be well uh, you're not going to have the learning process of what you practice today because your sleep is being interrupted with the caffeine. Yeah, So if you, if you drink coffee, make sure you drink it before 2 p.m. because yeah, the caffeine has time to get out of your system. You should, t- you should not take caffeine prior 8 to 10 hours before going to sleep. So 2 p.m. I would say is or 3 p.m. It's like the latest where I would drink coffee. These are things I'm experimenting with right now at the moment. But uh, yeah, so caffeine helps. It's actually good. Coffee, caffeine, you be more alert. You can drink it in the morning. But later in the day, you should not drink coffee. It will disrupt your sleep and therefore your uh, efficiency while your brain won't learn the processes you just practiced this during this day. Um. There are also other things you can do in order to enhance your practicing and and learning a skill faster. So, for example, uh, nutrition, but that's something I I will not talk about. Yeah, Um, Exercise, because, again, exercise increases your dopamine levels. You'll be more motivated also to then go and practice your instrument because motivation is key if you want to practice well, you want to be focused. Going to do some physical exercise is going to benefit you so much. And in the end, really, all that matters is that you really practice consciously. You sit down and when you do a mistake, you stop and you go back. You don't just play through it. You you don't let these mistakes happen because every time you get furious about a mistake and you repeat it, your brain is changing. Your, your neuroplasticity is in activity. And you are learning a skill faster. You by by doing more mistakes and by repeating a thing over and over again, you're learning faster. It seems like you're taking more time, but actually, that's way more effective to learn something. And uh, last but not least, um, there is a certain supplement which uh, I, I'm I'm gonna experiment with as well. It's called Alpha GPC. It's a supplement that enhances cognitive function so it's not a stimulant like coffee but it as, as far as i'm concerned it was uh, it, it amplifies some certain neural neuronal pathways which increases focus it sounds kind of shady but dr huberman actually recommended and he says he takes it himself when he has a difficult task in hand and it helps you to be more focused during a longer period of time so that could be like a boost. It should not replace sleep. It should not replace nutrition or exercise. But it's something like a boost that can even make you more alert and, and more focused while practicing. So by combining all of these things, you should be able to, you know, jump ahead the competition and learn faster your piece and your, your, your instrumentalistic uh, skills. Um I'm experimenting with this right now. Uh, I will maybe come back and make another video on seeing like what the progress was because I'm doing this right now. I'm sleep. I'm trying to sleep well. I'm dimming the lights except off right now. I'm getting sunlight into my face, into my eyes, into my skin. Um, I'm practicing very consciously at the moment. I'm trying to not distract myself right after practicing. 
So all these things together, combining that, also metronome, by the way, as a side note, metronoming by playing a piece with a metronome helps a lot, scientifically speaking. It's been proven that by repeating something systematically with the same tempo allows your brain to be somehow better with neuroplasticity and, and, and remembering a certain movement. Uh, so, yeah, I'm trying out these things right now and I I'll might I'll might give uh, an update later. So I hope these things are quite interesting for you and maybe you can try it out yourself, change a little bit your behaviors uh, with, with sleep, with exercise and nutrition, because in the end, that's the foundation of why you are a good musician, uh, besides of musicality, which is in creativity, which is a complete other topic, which is something we can t talk about another time. But yeah, for instrumentalistic skills, yeah, the ability to play your instrument, these things are key. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, quick video and uh, maybe I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>